yeah, again, I know that's controversial, uh, but just just hear me out. <laughs> and how do you think they're determining like the happiness index of, of a product? All right, so Carly, give us the answer. Yes or no, <laughs> yes or no. <laughs> Does PPC help with organic ranking? Welcome back everyone to that Amazon ads podcast. Burr, 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 burr. Anyways, today we've got a, uh, a really good topic for you guys t- covering the question, does yeah. PPC <laughs> <Media>. actually <laughs> help with organic ranking? I know that was a really stupid intro, wasn't it? I'm just, we're diving right in though. No, it was perfect. Now you just started lagging. <laughs> oh, did I already start lagging? Okay, that's not good. Immediately. Well, <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, well, we're going like... to have fi- to figure that out. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to see, does PPC actually help with organic ranking? And we've got a guest on the show today. You just heard her speak. It's Carly McMillan. She is an Amazon advertising expert at PPC Farm. Carly, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Stephen. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here and to talk about organic rank. Awesome. And we also got Andrew. Yep, here, here and supporting. Uh, great to have you, Carly. I'm excited to dive into this. We haven't really talked about this topic too much and like what all goes into ranking organically on Amazon. You have a really interesting perspective that you're going to share today. And you're you're kind of telling us that it's not all just about how much money you're spending on PPC how sometimes it can work that way and sometimes it goes a different direction. So really curious and interested to hear your thoughts on all that and dive right in. Yeah, a little bit of a controversial opinion, I know, but uh, hopefully we can come to a consensus. Yeah, I think it is a an extremely uh, pertinent topic um, to discuss because Andrew and I have seen both sides of the spectrum and we were just, you know, we were all just having a conversation before we hit the record button um, about Sometimes PPC does help. Sometimes it doesn't help. Uh, sometimes it's not needed. Sometimes no amount of it is is going to do anything for you. So before we actually dive into this topic, Carly, you want to just tell everyone a little bit more context about you, how you got first got involved in the Amazon PPC space? Yeah, absolutely. So I started in e-commerce, mostly uh, Shopify in the skincare uh, industry. Um, so I was doing that for over five years, actually over in Asia. So for a company based out of Hong Kong. Um, and and then from there, uh, transitioned over to Amazon and um, the parent company of PPC Farm is still an Amazon seller and uh, has been in the Amazon game for you know over a decade. And so um, started working working for them. And then um, PPC Farm was sort of born out of that so that we could sort of share our knowledge as sellers with with other folks so that they didn't uh, make all the same mistakes that we did along the way. Right. And PPC Farm is exclusively Amazon advertising. Is that correct? Yep, that's right. That's that's all we do, and uh, it's 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 a lot of fun. And there's it's it's such a deep well. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you do SEO as well? Uh, nope. We just we just do Amazon ads management, just the PPC side of things to really kind of focus and and you know hone our expertise there. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Cool backstory too. I mean, coming from a seller and then launching their own PPC side of things, I always love to see that because uh, a good test of like, you know, you got a lot of people coming into the Amazon space, new people claim to be experts, but usually the people who actually know it are the people who have actually sold products on Amazon before, seen that full process. So kind of an interesting take there. I haven't really heard a lot of sellers branching off and, and doing that type of stuff. So really cool. Yeah, it's 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 helped a lot, you know. Um, and we everything that we do in the agency, we apply to our own, you know, portfolio of SKUs. We we eat our own cooking, as they as they say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. All right, so Carly, give us the answer: yes or no? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> Does PPC help with organic ranking? Okay, I, I don't know if I have a yes or no answer. That would be a very short episode, I think. Um, but I guess. How I kind of want to start out is that um, I think that it's sort of a a myth um, that you can just spend a lot of money on PPC and get ranked number one um, and that you could do that for any SKU, right? That Mm -hmm. any SKU can potentially get ranked number one. And um, I just don't think that that's always the case and um, maybe not even, you know, on the first page. Um, And the reason behind that is just not every ASIN inherently deserves to have that top spot, right? Um, so yeah, again, I know that's controversial, um, but just, just hear me out <laughs> because the reason I think that this is such an important concept to understand is because I think it can save you money, you know, as, as sellers, it, it would be so nice if we could just 
spend money on PPC and get ranked. But since that's not the case, you know, maybe maybe save that ad spend and invest those resources somewhere else. So um, that's kind of my my initial stance. Interesting. So that's going to ruffle a lot of feathers with a lot of people because there's so many people out there that think that, you know, PPC is such a, a valuable asset to driving organic rank, helping you stimulate some of that ranking and things like that. So, you know, kind of walk us through like, what are you doing when you're evaluating like a particular product and you're looking at its potential keyword pairings or search phrases that it might want to appear in and convert well on? How are you determining or deciding whether this SKU or this ASIN is able to rank on a particular keyword? Yeah, for sure. So I think it can be kind of useful to take a few steps back and kind of uh, think about things from Amazon's perspective first, right? Like this is the beast that we're all trying to feed, right? So if we kind of mm-hmm. think about it from uh, Amazon's perspective and think about if I were designing this sort of ranking system, this algorithm, you know, how would I do it? What is what is their goal, right? And um, I mean, I think besides, you know, total world domination that Amazon's goal is to make money, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, okay, duh. But how how are they doing that? Well, they, um, and, you know, Bezos has said this many, many times, um, their goal is to make the most amount of customers happy, right? So that people keep coming back, they love using Amazon, and that's kind of their bread and butter. So kind of given that, um, what I would do and what I think is probably what Amazon is doing, the way that their ranking system works is basically the product that has the highest probability of making the most amount of customers happy gets ranked number one and then second highest probability number two and third and so on and so on. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And this this is happening across, you know, every every single search query, you know, thousands, millions of times a day. Um, So in other words, I guess an example would be if a customer searches for garlic press, that product that's in that number one spot um, is the one that will theoretically or that Amazon thinks has the highest probability of satisfying the most amount of customers. Mm-hmm. And, and how do you think they're determining like the happiness index of, of a product? Like what what time, kinds of things are they looking at there to determine whether that product is going to make that customer happy, do you think? Yeah. So I love that. I love the happiness index. (laughs) Um, So I also kind of think about it like uh, this is sort of borrowed from Google ads, but like a quality score. Right. So they they give each product sort of this numeric score or a ranking. Right. Um, And and there's a lot a lot of things that are very likely getting attributed to that and getting factored into that. And that's where we can, you know, um, see things on the more SEO side of things. So it's almost, you know, certain that there's things like conversion rate, uh, price, you know, rating, reviews, all of that gets factored into Amazon's sort of quality score, but it also includes the entire customer journey, right? So it also inc- would include things like how often are you going out of stock? What's your rate of returns? You know, all of those things, because again, Amazon wants those happy customers. And so if they can't buy your product because it's out of stock or you have a bunch of bad, you know, low reviews or bad reviews, that kind of thing, um, then your inherent quality score is going to be lower and you'll be ranked lower. How crazy would it be if Amazon started showing us the ad quality st- score, uh, and they, you know, they gave us an actual score and it showed you like, hey, here are the areas where you're winning. Here's like the ten categories of that of what goes into the quality score, and that'd be nice. That'd be game over, right? Like then everybody yeah. would just everybody would just do all those things. And I mean, yeah. I think you know we we have pretty good guesses, right? Like obviously mm-hmm. they care about conversion rate and things like that, and obviously they care if you're. Um, and so there's, you know, if your images are good and you have a higher conversion rate, that that all gets yeah. factored in. Do you think how how important do you think click through rate is in ad quality score? Yeah, so it's I don't know, it's 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 hard to say. Um, I do think that it's probably it's probably a factor, right? They're gonna try to, if I were Amazon, I would try to be gathering as many data points as possible on a product to determine its it its deserved rank to determine how high I should or how often I should put that in front of customers, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, hard to, hard to say, because I wish they released this information, right? But yeah. Yeah. So so this is not really today's topic, but obviously SEO is a going to be a huge component here. In like, I think whenever people are talking about organic ranking, the conversation's always around SEO indexing, um, which that's a, a really good point, but I've got a, I have a client right now um, and I'm not going to share their their actual category. So 
we'll just say tennis rackets, the classic uh, example that Andrew and I like to use. Let's just say they're in the tennis rackets category. And they've been selling for, gosh, I don't know how long, over a decade. I mean, decades. The 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 some of the some of the brands that 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 they're licensing from have been decades in in the industry. So, if you're selling tennis rackets, let's just say, and you're really struggling with organic rank, the solution for them, which another SEO agency came to them saying, because I only do the PPC myself, so um, I referred them to someone that was very uh, prolific talking about SEO all the time on LinkedIn. I was like, hey, they might be a good connection. And so far what these people have done is they just really made sure to include the word tennis rackets all over the uh, the product listing and back end and all the possible places. And then I had to go back to the client. I was like, you know what? Amazon knows you're a tennis racket. Just yeah. saying tennis racket <laughs> a few more times is not the reason why we're not ranking organically. The primary reason from my opinion uh, just based off of purely anecdotal evidence is that within like since 2020 a t- uh, it's it's a tale as old it's becoming a tale as old as time about consumer price sensitivity and this brand is a little bit more premium and is also uh, trying to obey all of the US regulations around their product um, I don't know if you know how many regulations there are for tennis rackets but there's a lot of stuff for it to be legal and safe just kidding that's, that's not the product category Um <laughs> But there have been a massive, massive influx of Chinese sellers that are selling this basically the same product at a 50% discount. It's even worse because this brand is technically manufactured in China. The only difference is that they still have to go through all the US regulations. And what ended up happening is a lot of these, I mean, their whole entire category is manufactured in China. And a lot of these manufacturers just started rather than selling to American brands who would put a who would put their brand on it and sell a little bit more for for like the premium branding. They just started selling direct to consumer and started selling wholesale. So they're basically selling to Amazon shoppers at a wholesale price, what they would normally sell to the American brands who are taking care of like the packaging and customer support. And so far from what we've seen, particularly because of the consumer price sensitivity, there's a lot more of this happiness index in which people are feeling like they're able to escape inflation a little bit by getting pre-2020 prices back, right? So they're they're seeing prices are going up by like eight, nine, ten percent. And then they're saying, oh, look, these prices are cheap. You know, it feels like we fixed inflation and because they're buying wholesale from these manufacturers. And so sorry, this is a this is a longer question, but the reason why I'm saying all that is because with this brand, their organic ranking has plummeted over the past several years, and we have been extremely aggressive with ad spend behind certain keywords, and they are working phenomenally to get the uh, to, to win the ad rank spot. We're, we're winning top of search and spending a ton of money up there, but there's been virtually no impact on the organic ranking and organic visibility. And these ranking keywords are not profitable. So we're losing a ton of money on these ranking keywords and not seeing the organic rank benefit. So um, I do think that's a, it's a very strong case study. So when you presented us with this topic and this question, um, this was the first thing that came to mind was that, you know, I agree. PPC doesn't always help to work to, to rank. And so given that, what would your advice be for this for this product? You know, like what I would you think we should not spend as much there or or I don't know, like what what's your overall opinion on everything I just said? Yeah, yeah. And that's you know, that's a lot of sellers' experience, especially right now, you know, where there are a lot of third parties coming in and selling things really, really cheap and you just you can't you can't go down to break even and you're not going to make any money right so you just can't compete and um that's actually something that we experience as well because um the the parent company of PBC Farm uh start you know a lot of our portfolio is private label right and so this is a this is an area that's super ripe for this exact kind of problem and so what we would try to do is uh, lower our price and see if we could then improve our organic ranking. And what we found happened, and then you know, spend on PPC and that kind of thing at the same time. Mm-hmm. What we found happened is that yes, we could we could we could improve our rank, and we would rank. Let's say we were at forty five, and then we we got up to ten, and we would enjoy that number ten spot. You know, that entire time that our price was more competitive. But then as soon as we mm-hmm. raised it back up, we're right back down to forty five, regardless of what we're spending in PPC. Yep. You know, and I think that's exactly what this whole idea of a deserved rank, you know, sort of tells us is that, um, you know, yes, you, you can, of course, do things to change your sort of inherent rank, right? You can, you know, it's not to say don't improve your SEO, it's not to say don't do price experiments, but the way you're stacked up against the competition is is just the reality of it, right? Kind of a harsh mm-hmm. reality that you just sort of have to accept. And so 
what I think that PPC can basically do um, is you're you're just sort of uh, letting Amazon take another pass over your over your product, right? So let's say you do uh, you do something to fit with your SEO, you add in more keywords and that kind of thing. And then, and then you, you can spend a little on PPC to say like, Hey, Amazon, you know, look at me, you know, I, I made these changes now. Can you like right. reevaluate my, my can score? collect some new data with it? Yeah, exactly. Cause they're probably running their own, you know, internal AB tests and that kind of thing. And Hey, if a seller's paying them to run the AB test, they're going to, they're going to do, they're going to do that. Right. It's like a free AB test for them. Um, and so right. PPC can kind of help you to, uh, to get in front of Amazon again, um, or or more often, and show them, hey, I am converting better than my competitors. You know, look at this, and then and then that will that can improve your rank. Um, and the other thing that PPC could do is show your product on maybe a wider swath or wider range of keywords than you would. You know, maybe you're already indexed for based on you know. I mean, we have a limited amount of characters in the in the listing and things like that in the back end. So PPC can kind of help you appear on a wider range of terms and and that kind of thing but so in terms of i guess in terms of my advice for this this client um you know i don't think it's a it's a situation where you just be like well we just need to throw our hands up and cut our losses and you know this is this is dead in the water we can't compete you know um no what i would say is that you just maybe need to accept that maybe you're only moving 10 units a day and but so instead of trying to force you know hitting that hitting 20 units a day and spending more and like you know, really, really pushing for that, even when it's not profitable, um, to just maybe accept, okay, this is where this product deserves to be ranked, and I'm okay with, with, with this amount, with the sales volume, and so, uh, and so maybe then take those resources and you can invest them in maybe new product development, or maybe you can invest them if you, let's say you've identified that there is something in your listing you can improve, you know, investing in getting. I don't know, new photo shoot or you know, redoing your labels or you know, improving features right. of the product, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, that that was my advice to them is uh have you used Pickview, by the way? Yeah, yeah, for like okay. a, a-, a- B testing your your Yeah. Um, if anyone and- we need to have actually I, I was talking with the CEO of Pickview. We got a I think he agreed to come on the podcast sometime. So I'll have to follow up with him. But if anyone does not know, I'm not sure who who wouldn't know of Pickfu by this point, but um I had heard of it a lot, but I only recently tested it out. But it's basically like a focus group where you can survey a panel of people and you can, you know, A, B test or a, even A, B, C, D, E test a, a group of different pictures or mock Amazon listings. And you get l- virtually instant feedback and responses from real life people. So it's a really cool way to just get some quick data. And it's, I think, phenomenal before you go spend a ton of ex- experimental budget to be like, you know, let's spend a thousand dollars with this image and then another thousand dollars on this image and then we'll compare the conversion rates to see which one did better. It's like, you know, you can just spend like 20 bucks and buy a survey real quick. But the reason why I say all that is because when when we were seeing these results where we're putting all the spend in and not getting the organic ranking, my first thought was, okay, there's probably something else influencing the organic ranking. It's not just the total sales volume. Because I think that's the traditionally the... Um, the I guess like the mindset of what goes into your rank is your overall total sales volume, sales velocity, momentum, et cetera. And that PPC kind of helps with that, get you moving up that BSR ladder a little bit with some additional sales. But when we got those additional sales and there was no movement to organic, I took a screenshot of the of one competing product that was supposedly a top seller. I thought the thing looked hideous. It was probably the <laughs> ugliest main image I've ever seen in my entire life. Absolutely horrible and gross. And it was like CGI rendering, just looked like crap and it's a $70 product and our product's $120 so it's a little bit higher AOV and we put them into PicView ugly product really nice product and like 80% of the results were saying they would pick it just because of price like that was the only thing that mattered and so that was really good feedback for us and what we ended up finding is we just ran a a limited time deal on it just like a 10% discount and that actually really helped with our conversion rates and it, I'm taking your your language where you, you were talking about giving Amazon another pass, giving them an opportunity to like A B test it. And so one way could be in um in search, in paid search, I should say, giving Amazon more time to put this into rotation and seeing what the responses from customers in terms of how happy they are with it. But I also think running deals, uh, what was really cool is that we saw our organic ranking go from being on page two and three of the search all the way up to being ranked in the top five on page one while we were on deal. 
And then as soon as that deal ended, here's where things get interesting. Some of the products dropped all the way back to page two, almost like immediately. And some of the products actually were able to maintain, not necessarily like ranking the top five, but uh, we're, we're seeing like the, on like our rank radar that like they're slowly dropping from like three to four to eight. And like, you know, there's a little bit of momentum fa- effect. So I'm curious in your perspective, I've got two questions here. Number one, have you seen that too? Where like you, where there's like a little bit of momentum potentially that carries on even after your, your super promotional period. And then the second question, maybe we should start with this, but, but how do you track keyword ranking for, for all of these things? Yeah, for sure. So I, I do think that you you can stick for a while, right? It, let's say, you know, if Amazon is testing and they see, oh, this this product is actually, you know, starting to sort of move up in, in their own internal internal ranking system in their own database, right? Um, then they'll they want to maybe continue testing it, right? Um, I will say the kind of a side thing, there is also the flip side of this, right? If you are running these experiments kind of thing or making these adjustments and then spending more on PPC and you're not getting good results, then what you're telling Amazon is actually you deserve to be ranked even lower, right? right? Yep. So you need to be a little bit careful. You need to be, you need to do a little bit of soul searching and, and you know, take a look at your product, take a look at your listing and, you know, really uh, make sure that you're confident before you start you know, spending money on PPC and doing all this stuff. Um, Cause I do think people have a tendency to just kind of like in, you know, think of things in a vacuum and just kind of have blinders on to the competition sometimes, um, especially, um, you know, newer, newer sellers and, and that kind of thing. So you do need to be a little bit careful. Um, but yeah, in terms of, in terms of ranking, I mean, you know, we just, we, we use, we use BSR, we use those internal tools to just kind of uh, keep track of where, where rankings are. Helium 10 is also, a source. I don't think, I don't know how accurate, you know, I mean, with the great, take everything with a grain of salt, but yeah. How are you guys typically tracking? You said Helium 10 is your primary tool for this? It's not our primary tool, but it's, it's one tool. Otherwise we just basically will scrape Amazon for Mm -hmm. BSR and just kind of keep track of that internally. Cause I I don't know if there's not a report, right? Again, Amazon's not giving us information, but yeah. And then kind of compare contrast. Yeah. My experience with Helium 10 is just, it takes for ever to set up your your rank All tracking because you got to go like yeah. one at a time yeah so i recently started using data dive it's pretty expensive okay. if you have like a ton of keywords and products like this one does um but yeah andrew i think you were gonna say yeah something. i had a question um just kind of on that topic steven was talking about running some deals seeing a little bit of lift and rank for a time and potentially you know getting some of that um curious in your experience have you ever run any like strategic promotions with varying time lengths, like let's say seven, 14 or 30 day deals and seen any difference between those? Because I'm sure Amazon, like as it's going back through doing these passes, it's and it, and how it's doing its ranking is um, primarily based on a certain look back window of data, of metrics, of certain things that it's looking at. Have you seen any differentiation between like timelines for deals, like having a greater impact? Is it, is it just pretty straightforward? Like you run a longer time deal, maybe it you know, stimulates a little bit more rank or you get a little more out of it if you can hold on to that deal for a little longer, things like that. Any any insights there? Oh, that's a really interesting thought. No, we haven't um, run any experiments specifically looking at the time window and look back period, but I think that that has a lot of, you know, a lot of weight to it and, and makes a lot of sense because they're probably setting, you know, internally those those look back windows. So no, that, yeah. that like makes a lot of sense though. Yeah, for sure. I was just curious. And then, um, you know, to kind of contrast what Steven was talking about, he was saying like he's spending all this money on PPC and not seeing results, have a lot of competitors kind of coming in and things like that. I kind of want to shift to the other end of the spectrum and talk about a instance where I've been working with this one brand and they've been on the platform for a very long time, growing really rapidly, big, big brand. And um, it seems like whenever they launch new products, they list new products, Within the first like week or two, we're already, without spending any money, we're kind of just waiting on some reviews to come through, get you know the early reviewer program, all that type of stuff. Um, and we're already ranking for our top volume terms, the most search terms in the category for this product. We're already number two, number three, like there's not much more that PPC is gonna do on those, those terms for us organically. And I'm just curious, like, have you seen that instance as well? And like, what, what could we, you know, possibly attribute that to? And what's the cause for that? Because it's like, I'm not spending anything on PPC and, and seeing my, my products rank really well. Like what, what gives? Yeah, for sure. And I think it's, I think it probably has a lot to do with sort of Amazon's own, uh, 
database of historical data on a certain brand, right? Like if they know that this brand performs well, then that is probably it's probably also a factor in that in that happiness index and in that quality score, right? right. Um, so mm-hmm. there and there could even be different layers to it, right? It could be brand brand level quality score and then you know product level that kind of thing. Um, totally. So I think I would imagine that that's probably what's happening. Also, you know, I have um, with worked with some brands where they they almost own the entire category, right? Like their name mm. has almost become entirely synonymous with all of the sort of network of keywords right. related to related to their products. And in that case, um, you're it's almost like uh, it's almost like branded search at that point, right? Even mm-hmm. though the keyword it doesn't include that brand's brand name, it's so synonymous with that brand that it's basically branded search at that point. And um, I know that's kind of another topic, but when it comes to branded search, you know, you'll often find that and uh, brand defense and that kind of thing. I know this is another controversial opinion maybe, but um, you know, uh, you might not need to spend uh, on advertising if you are already ranked so highly. Maybe there's not that much, you know, marginal gain from having your ad there and then your organic right right next to each other, right? That that kind of thing. Um, yeah. But, yeah. So in that instance, like let's say you launch this new product, it's already ranking for your top terms. You know, maybe there's some that you could spend on, but on those ones where you're already ranking and it's a new product, like do you think you should be spending on those terms just to like, you know, when an additional placement on the page, those types of things, what would you recommend in that type of scenario? Is it still important to have that PPC going on those terms? Yeah. So in my opinion, I think that you can, you can really scale it back on top of search because again, like you're, you're, if you're already ranked organically number one, not so much marginal gain coming from having your ad right there too. But I do think that there could, there's, still value in rest of search and product pages and those other those other placements because again you're just kind of you're getting in front of that customer again and giving them another chance to kind of see so um obviously you got to go where the data tells you to go and if if it turns out that you are getting you know you know lots lots from top of search you know you can you can run the experiment turn off ads on you know turn off the top of search placement for a while or adjust your multiplier or something like that um, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, in, in general, I feel that because it's so akin to branded search, which actually is, um, yeah, in, in my opinion, you don't really need to play so much brand events cause you're going to get those sales anyway. I think that that is more or less what's happening too, with those, um, with those brands that are already ranked super high for, for keywords, even right out of the gate. Uh, but I do think that there, there's, there's always going to be weird ways that people search for stuff that you can still, that still makes sense to spend on, right. That you can still compete on. So, um, you know, for let, let's say the brand was Kleenex, right. Kleenex is already very synonymous with tissue, but people might search for Kleenex in all kinds of weird ways. And so you still want to have those types of, you know, more long tail keywords in your keyword portfolio, just to make sure that you were, uh, getting as much of that market share as possible, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I I love that idea of just trying to dial back top of search a little bit, maybe even like play with some of the more creative ad types, like trying to influence sales in that, in that regard as well with some video or, you know, sponsored brands, things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's a a really good point and a good way to kind of allocate resources a little bit better. Whenever you look at, uh, or test a keyword, like you, you run an ad with a product and you don't see it move and rank organically. Like let's just say you run it for two weeks and you have seen no movement and you, you're like, hey, this is not a good keyword for the SKU. Is there ever a period of time where you're like, hey, let's test that again now because our our product has actually gotten more reviews now and like it looks like conversion rates are getting a little bit better. Maybe we recycle and, and try that term again or try that keyword again and see if maybe now is a better time for, for us to you know push some and get some rank out of it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. For, you know, kind of your your top keywords, keywords that are just so clearly relevant, you know, um, because those tend to be the more short tail broad searches that are maybe more expensive and maybe you weren't able to compete on before. But now you can if you've made some changes, you know, to your to your to your quality score, to your happiness index. Right. Um, And then I think that that can be that can be worthwhile to to experiment with again. Yeah. Uh, especially seasonality, obviously, yeah, that's also a factor. Yeah. For sure. Andrew, I, I had a question for you. Um, sure. I mean, part of that it was probably just the, the honeymoon period, right? Like, that's pretty typical for Amazon. When, you, when there's a brand new product launch, Amazon's going to give it some nice visibility just to get some quick early data on it. Mm-hmm. And then they're going to kind of like re- return it back to like, you know, they're going to take away that, that initial boost. So do you think you're still within that honeymoon period or, or do you think even... You're, no, you're past that, you're no, still getting... it, yeah, it's like months after the product launch. Like, gotcha. yeah, yeah, still maintaining that rank. It's 
Pretty Did it have good reviews out the gate? Like you guys yeah. get pre-reviews? Yeah, I get those early reviews from the Vine program and mm -hmm. um, you know some other other means of doing things like that. But yeah, yeah, cool. All right, Carly, another question for you. I think we've covered pretty in depth a good caveat to the whole using PPC to grow rank conversation and really just clarifying, hey, only if it deserves to rank. And here are some elements that go into deserve what what we're defining like deserves as ranking, basically just being a really good product overall and a really good fit for that keyword and, and having the data to prove it. Um, but my question is, when you do deserve to rank, you know, when, when you when you've met that criteria, how effective is PPC from from your experience in terms of driving up that organic ranking? How well does it really work? Yeah, so I think that it all just kind of comes back to, you know, what what PPC is doing is giving you another another shot, another chance to prove to Amazon that you do indeed deserve to rank. And um, a big part of that is going to be conversions, right? So I'm not exactly sure if they if they uh, categorize PPC conversions separately from organic conversions or if it's sort of a combined score. I don't know. I wish we knew. But maybe, you know, uh, increasing your conversion rate over in PPC is, again, another thing that's going to help uh, improve your inherent quality score, right? Um, again, flip side of that, if you're not getting conversions, then yes, you're telling Amazon that, right. you know, rank me lower, that kind of thing. So I, I do think that, it, it, in my opinion, that is that is the effect that PPC can have. So it's not it's not directly related. To, I wish that you know they'll they'll take your money, and I wish that they could we you could just spend on PPC and it would rank us up. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, but so I do think it has a positive impact if you do deserve to yeah. rank higher. So what I've I think a lot of people their experience has been that when they are putting money into those organic ranking keyword campaigns, whatever, or just their keyword ranking campaigns, they see that lift in organic ranking. They see they're doing better there. And then when they decide to like pull back on that spend or l lower their their target ACOS or pause those campaigns entirely, then they see the organic drop. And so I think at least that's, that's what people are claiming to see. Mm. Um, full disclosure, a little embarrassingly, we don't, I personally don't do a ton of this keyword ranking tracking just because it's it's difficult to find a tool that's going to do it all. Um, yes. So it's it's a it's a bit of a a, a weakness in, in terms of my own reporting and, and everything. But from what everyone else is is seeing and experiencing, there's kind of this correlation where like when you're putting juice behind the product, you're getting better ranking there. And let's just, let's just assume like convert in the scenario conversion rates and SEO that's all staying constant. But they're just saying that like when they put some juice behind it, they are getting additional sales and maybe it's just like moving them up on the BSR ladder or something. But I'm curious if that has been your experience in which for some keywords, you kind of need to always maintain some level in, of investment to keep the organic ranking up because if you pull it back, you, you lose it. Is that your experience? Yeah. So not not in our experience. I think I think mm. that um, it's you really would really want to track that on the keyword level, right? You would really want to mm -hmm. see how exactly the spend is correlated. And so I think that just sort of, I think it's sort of anecdotal and, and it's so hard to review the data and over different time periods and it's really hard to do good science and you know run clean experiments and you know did nothing really change that kind of thing you know so there's a lot of sort of um maybe control factors or variables that are that are, yeah it's difficult to control for um but in our experience that is not necessarily the case um the only time i i I think I've already talked about this a little bit, but the, the only time that I think that that might happen is if for some reason Amazon does not. So in your tennis racket example, so for there's maybe peripheral keywords around tennis racket, um, like tennis ball. Maybe you still want to show up there, even though you're not a tennis ball, you're a tennis racket, but it's very much, you know, a complementary search. Uh, PPC can help you to show up on those kind of peripheral uh, keywords and on those, if you do, if you pull back, you know it. It makes sense that you might also see a drop in organic. Yep, yeah, think makes sense. I've got one last question for you. Um, I do and too. then I'll see if Andrew. Okay, cool. And then Andrew, last question, and, and then yeah. we'll uh, give you an opportunity to to wrap up. Actually, well, I have a concluding question after Andrew's question, but I'll ask that my stupid topic. question first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is my dumb question. <laughs> So, okay, I'll ask a t on topic question. Andrew will ask his stupid question and then I'll wrap cool. up with an off topic Love question. It. Love it. My first question is actually more of a statement, full, full disclosure. It's more of a uh, do you agree or disagree with this thought of mine? Um, but going back to my tennis racket client, one thing that is 
probably also important to note is that they are a vendor. Um, uh, and we just dropped an episode on Vendor Central for anyone who doesn't know what that is. You can go back and listen to it. But Amazon has a ton of their inventory on hand and that inventory is just not really moving at these prices. And so Amazon has been trying to drop the retail prices to try to help move the inventory a bit. But when Amazon does that, that's actually biting into Amazon's own margins on their sales. And so I would actually add, because you were saying that the biggest factor to uh, organic ranking is like, does the customer like you? But I would add to that because I've seen it super firsthand with this brand in particular, does Amazon like you? So, yeah. and that's actually what I went back and I actually, I, I'm really excited, Carly, that you were using that same like concept. Cause I, there's a lot of stuff I think we agree on that that I've had a lot of these thoughts independently. It's cool to see someone else having the same thoughts and and uh, some some good confirmation there that I'm not crazy. But <laughs> what I was telling my client is that there's only two, in super simple terms, there's only two things that matter when it comes to organic rank is does the customer like you? Does Amazon like you? And then I kind of told her the same thing that these PPC and these deals is giving an Amazon another chance to like test it to see if, if it can if it can stay. But when it comes to Amazon liking you, whether you're a seller or a vendor, I think a big part of it is just how much money does Amazon make off of you? And the other thing I really like about what you said is you're trying to like, when, when trying to understand how this algorithm works, you're thinking like, what would I do if I was in control of it? <laughs> you know, if I was Jeff Bezos or not, he's not even the CEO anymore, but if yeah. I was whoever is now uh, king of Amazon, uh, you know, what would, what would I do? And that's, I think the same thing that Andrew and I have too. Where we're always just trying to like put our selves in, in their shoes to see how that would go. So would you agree with that, that it's those two factors primarily in, in super simple terms? Yeah, I think I think I would agree with that. Um, I don't know, you know, uh, on Vendor Central for sure. I use it as kind of a different different ball game, and I think Amazon is definitely factoring that in uh, a lot more than on Seller Central. I I feel like as sellers, that Amazon doesn't care about us very much. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, oh, like really? well, I mean, in the sense that um, uh, they um, they're not just going to reward you for spending a bunch of money. They're not going to say, oh, this person is spending so much on PPC. I'm going to rank them higher, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. But I I do think again, you know, like for example, with inventory, um, Amazon likes when you're in inventory, that's very good, you know, because it helps them make sure that they're fulfilling things when they promise that they will and that, and that kind of thing. So yeah, I think, I think it, it, it kind of is in a similar vein, you know, but it comes back Mm -hmm. to how can we make the beast that is Amazon happy? So yeah, do they, do they, do they like you? And then do the customers like you? And that that has a lot of crossover. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then within like seller, you have ways that Amazon kind of tells you how much it likes you. Yeah. yeah like your, your IPI score and like, you know, how much, you know, on hand. And, yeah. Yeah. You, you get it. Um, so my stupid question for you is uh, in Helium 10, you said you use Helium 10 uh, for a lot of your rank tracking and all that type of stuff. Is the CPR eight day giveaway thing accurate? You know, that little thing I'm talking about. This was really big back in like 2015. Everybody was (laughs) like, you just follow the CPR eight day giveaway strategy. If you give away that or you sell that many units in a seven day or eight day period, uh, you're going to be ranked number one. Is that accurate? And have you seen that be (laughs) We haven't played around with that in a long time, but I mostly know. I mean, we take all of Helium 10's data sort of with, yeah, with a grain of salt and, um, a lot of skepticism, uh, but uh, but no, we didn't really have. I, I not in my experience. Have you guys played around with that? No, no, I haven't. But okay. I've always wondered. I always yeah. see that in there. It's like, oh, you just have to sell eight in an eight day period, and you'll be ranked, and all that type of stuff. And yeah, I've never actually tested it and tried to correlate it. So I was just curious. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. I don't. I mean, that seems too easy, right? That seems. I don't know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> maybe you. it's maybe it'll get better with machine learning. Andrew and I were just talking with. The, the ad labs devs about ad labs devs about exploring some machine learning and predictive models and using like all of our database and connecting with some database partners to see if we could do something similar to like to predict with you know how much budget would it take for me to get to this ranking mm. but that's going to require a ton of data around like investment levels for different like web scraping all this kind of stuff that'd be it'd, so cool it'd be, yeah but then all, it, obviously it's super complicated because then there's we can cover, that's like one variable, which is like how much investment level, the investment level is basically going to give you an idea of how much like sessions, which will give you a little bit of an idea about how much total sales, which just kind of goes into BSR if you're out selling other brands. But then obviously, does Amazon like you? Like what are Amazon's margins? And does the customer yeah. like you? 
uh, what are your conversion rates relative to all the other products conversion rates? That stuff's not necessarily in there. So it would be very difficult to do, but so we'll valuable explore. though, if, if yeah. that's possible. Yeah. It sounds complicated though, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Carly, final question for you is what's the one lesson that you learned recently that you wish you would have learned a long time ago? Uh, yeah, you, would, you wish you would have learned it a lot sooner and that can be either Amazon specific or just in life in general. Or one oh, of each. Related to deserved ranking or just either enjoy. one. Yeah, it could be or it could just be a life lesson. Anything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it related to deserved ranking because that's what's on my mind right now. Cool. But Great. um <laughs> I do <laughs> um I do they I do wish that we would have learned this lesson that that we would have, you know, not put so many resources into PPC um in in some of our products that were just sort of just they're not going to stack up against competition and they're they right. they've reached the end of their life cycle and it you know it's time to just accept that we're not going to be able this isn't going to be a million dollar product and let's move on you know we've spent a lot of resources um not only on ppc but trying to um improve the listings you know going back and getting better deals with the vendor all of that stuff that could have been used more wisely elsewhere to do new product development or uh, yeah, just in other places in the company. So that that has been an expensive lesson to learn. And uh, I think one I wish I uh, would have known sooner. Love it. Awesome. awesome. And Carly, as we wrap up here, I just want to give you an opportunity to just tell everybody where they can connect with you if they want to touch base and talk to you more about this stuff and, and work with you potentially. So uh, just real quickly share where everybody can find you. We'll put all the links and everything in the description below. Awesome. Yeah. So you can reach out to me directly, Carly at ppcfarm.com. I love talking about PPC. Um, so hit me up. We can nerd out. <laughs> um, also on LinkedIn, uh, Carly McMillan, uh, or you can find out more about the agency at ppcfarm.com. All right. Awesome. Thanks everybody so much for tuning into another episode of that Amazon ads podcast. Thank you, Carly, for joining us and we will see you next week for another episode. Thanks so Thanks, much. Thanks Carly. See you guys. Thank you.